Man, Peter B is truly loved. Man, look at the love he's getting all across Nigeria. Wherever he go, there's always massive turnout. Especially the youth. The youth of Nigeria trust this man. And this man must win this election to give the youth of this country hope for a better future. So, look at what happened in the uh, University of Abuja with B2B. Let me allow you to uh, watch the video. But before then, please, I plead with you to subscribe to my channel. At least take me to 1,000. Please. Thank you. Yesterday, I discussed the debt 
about you. And I said to them, this city of Banchi is where we had a leader. That's what I believe. A man leader that was in 1964, June 17, 1964, applied to the World Bank for the first time for Nigeria to borrow money, to borrow $82 million to build the Kainj Dam to generate 760 megawatts of electricity. In that letter to the World Bank president, he said, we want to change the economy of our country. So this electricity will help us. 1964. That was the first time Nigeria borrowed money. And the World Bank replied, congratulating him for that vision and gave him that money. That is why her kind of that was built. 59 years after, that money which he borrowed in 1964 today is worth about 1.2, 1.3 billion naira dollars. 1.2, 1.3 billion dollars. Today, since nine years after, we can still talk about Kanji now. But Nigeria today is owing in naira, if we put the ways and means to our debt, about 77 trillion. And if you convert it by 410 naira, you have about 187 billion dollars, which is the equivalent of 150 kind of dollars. Where are the kind of dollars? Please, we borrowed money. We borrowed money and wasted it. That is the problem we are facing today. Because if we have been able to borrow and generate 750, it would have been different. Nigeria today is facing a crisis of corruption, crisis in oil theft and everything, of proportion. Your university was closed for eight months in a country where the average tertiary intake is 9%, where the global average is at 8%. We're 9%, and it was shut down. And the reason why it was shut down because there was an agreement in 2009 with the federal government of Nigeria signed and agreed that they would pay put in 1.3 trillion. 1.3 trillion. And they paid 200. And in subsequent 10 years, they could not pay anything. And they're still a country. The same country. In all your theft in one month would have paid that. We're the only OPEC country that is not supplying our quota. Except from Venezuela because of that. In July, it's even worse in August. In July 2022, our OPEC quota is 1.8 million barrel per day. In July 2022. Our average production was 1,083,000. Every day, we lost 717,000. Which, for 31 days, was 222,237,000 barrels. That's what we lost in July. If we had done that and sold it, July last year was the highest price in of oil, hundred and ten dollars. That would have given us, if we use that hundred and ten to multiply twenty-two thousand two hundred and twenty-seven, we would have had two billion four hundred and forty-five million dollars. Which, if you multiply by six hundred and fifty, will give you one point four trillion. And we were closer in university because of one point one trillion. So in one month, we would have been able to solve that by giving them 1.1 trillion and use the remaining 300 trillion to complete the project of Abuja to Kano. <laughs> one month. I didn't say two months, one month. That is the worst we see in this country. You have an inflation today that is intolerable because of your fiscal rascality. So we have a problem. Your economy, there's no economy that I know today. Nigeria have 
Check the 3%, 40% on employment. You have only nearly 55% youth unemployment. Your youth in their productive age are doing nothing. You have a crisis. What will happen when they reach the retirement age? The country is finished. Because in their productive age, they are not doing anything. No country in the world of our size have that level of unemployment without declaring crisis. Today we are classified as a high country with the highest number of people in multidimensional poverty. One to three million people. We have more people living in poverty than India. India is 1.4 billion people. In fact, we have more people living in poverty than India and China combined. These two countries combined is 2.8 billion and we're just about 200 million. But we have more people living in poverty than two of them combined. They have about 20 million out of school children. Many girls in the north. So the crisis is something. Why did today the drug prevalence Elu globally is about 5.8 percent. Nigerian drug, drug prevalence among our youth are over 14 percent, more than twice the average. Because they have nothing to do, you are driving them into drugs and everything. And that is cumulative effect of what we are facing that you call crisis of banditry today. It's cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years that refuse to do the right thing. And I and my brother Dati have sat down and said, we can solve this. That a new Nigeria is possible. What are we going to do to do that new Nigeria? I don't want to bore you with crisis because I can speak about crisis of Nigeria for the whole of today. But starting, what is the difference between poor and rich nations? It's exemplified in Human Development Index. Simply, health, education, and per capita. If you fix the three items, you pull your country out of difficulty. So education is at the heart of this. So in fact, what you need to do to see the failure of your country, when you talk about health, you talk about life expectancy. Why the global average is about 72, 73, you are about 55. So you are 20, 20, about 20 years short of where the world is. In education, in human capital, we are 168 over 173 globally. So you fail per capita, you are just producing poverty. The only thing this country is manufacturing is poverty. And that's what we want to fix. What do we want to do? We've said Number one is I will secure and unite the country. The foundation of which you're going to build a new country is to secure the country. Without which you can't do any other thing. People must be secured. And let nobody make you believe that the enemy or the criminal is more formidable. It is not. What is lacking in leadership? What is lacking is to have a governance structure, security governance structure that addresses the problem. And that will only come with leadership. Daddy and I have said we will deal with that issue decisively. Anybody who cares to know 
We're not going to give you an excuse. We want you to hold us responsible. It stops at our death and we'll deal with it. We will discuss with those who are vulnerable and those who are not, we'll deal with them. They must be a government. One person must be in charge. We can't share it with any other person. Simultaneously, as we are doing this, you must start because everything you need to do must be simultaneous. You must start pulling people out of poverty. The only way to do this is to remove your country today from consumption to production. <laughs> Nigeria is not producing anything. It is a country that has wasted everybody's time on sharing. And we want to remove the sharing formula and replace it with production formula. We will tackle this country production based on our factor endowment. I was yesterday in Bauchu State. If you look at my campaign. I told the people of Bauchu State. You are today waiting for the money to be shared from Abuja. It will soon stop. Yes, because Baltic State is actually bigger than two countries. Baltic State is bigger than Belgium and Gambia combined. <laughs> Baltic State, Baltic State is forty-five point eight thousand square kilometers of land. Belgium is thirty-nine, thirty point nine. And Gambia is 10.8. If you plot these two, Banchi State is more. And they have less population. So they have more land for farming. But they can't feed themselves. When these two countries can feed themselves and everything, we have to stop it. Out of the 10 poorest states in Nigeria, nine is in the north. And that man is a state that can feed Nigeria. State that can make Nigeria a great nation. Because Nigeria can earn more from agriculture. I say it every day, far more than it earns from oil. God has blessed us with land. But we can't even feed ourselves. India can feed itself. India is 1.4 billion people living on 3.2 million square kilometers of land. Nigeria lives on one third of Indian land. We are living on 923,000 square kilometers when we have one seventh of their population. But they can feed themselves and export, but we cannot feed ourselves. It's unacceptable. They cannot continue. And we have states that will endure to be able to feed themselves. Niger State is poor. Boru State is poor. Taraba State is poor. These are our three biggest states. These states alone can feed themselves, feed Nigeria, and export. Niger State ends for statutory allocation. By the time they deduct their debts, most in a year, the most they can get is about fifty billion naira. That's all they can get. And that's what they're running around. They don't want to do any other thing. When they are sitting on 76.3 thousand square kilometers of fertile land, eight of their local governments is under control of bandits because they have no job. But they have 76.3 thousand square kilometers of fertile land that can change Nigeria to Nigeria. Netherlands have only, without water, 33,000 square kilometers of land. So Niger State is two and a half times the size of Netherlands. Netherlands last, in 2021, did an agricultural export of 103 billion euros, 120 billion dollars. Niger State cannot feed itself. But they have two and a half times their land. They have winter, they have everything. But they need 120 billion export of agricultural products 
Four times the entire Nigerian export. That's what Allah did in there. If Niger State was able to do just 5% of that, it would be $6 billion. At 650, 660, 700 that are is today, they will, be, they will have about 4 trillion, 80 times what they will earn for the allocation, but they won't do it because they are waiting for money to be shared. We want to remove that sharing from them. Let us take a game. The same thing is what you're going to see in all other places. Our problem today is Sambisa Forest. That is where we said we cannot. It's a farmland. <laughs> it's a place that can be productive. The Sambisa area is 60,000 square kilometers. That is three times the size of Israel. <laughs> Israel is 22.1. So if you tax Israel by 366, they are 60. It's 10% minus of loss. And it's giving us problems. We can become a farmland. Daddy and I have changed. We will change this country. Yes, it will not be the same again. <laughs> we are not here to give promise. So we can use that. The same thing goes with Taraba. I just want to use this three test to show you how great this country is. Same thing goes with Taraba. Taraba is 54.4 thousand square kilometers. That is bigger than Belgium and Israel combined. They can't feed themselves. Taraba is a fall of Mandela. Where you can do tourism, where you can grow flour, where you can grow tea, where you can grow coffee. I was in Kenya and I saw young boys and girls picking flour. Kenya did the export of over half a billion dollars of flour in 2021. Flour, technology science in growing flour. We have enough young girls and boys that we won't buy some during Valentine and everything. So we have, but we're not growing that. They want to go to holidays. Everybody's going to Kenya on holidays. What do they see in Kenya? It is the mountain, it's the beautiful scenery. We have it in Taraba. And people can go there. But we can't go there. Taraba can grow coffee. Ethiopia did a spot of $1.1 billion worth of coffee in 2021. Nigeria cannot. The total export of Nigeria, total export of Nigeria in 2021, including oil, is 18.9 trillion. Converted by 650, which is the rate today, is under 30 billion dollars. For a country of 200 million people living on 923,000 square kilometers. This you mentioned Malaysia. Malaysia lives on 329,000 square kilometers of land. 33 million population, their export in 2001 was over $250 billion. So we couldn't do my eight times what we did is what Malaysia did. It's unacceptable. We will change this country. We must make it productive. What did Malaysia export? Including the oil. Palm oil, which they came here to learn. No. Vietnam came out of war a few years ago. Vietnam export. Vietnam is some 331,000 square kilometers of land. 100 million population. Half of our population, their export is over 350 billion. We couldn't do 10% of what they're doing. That's not bad. We double their population, three times their land size. It's unacceptable. I can go on and on. You have a great country. You have a great space. What you lack is leadership. This is why I wasted everybody's time for a long time. And throw your future. We're talking about your future. It's not about our future. It's your future. When you say people should go and talk in university. This year I was telling you in your office. All the great men I met, I met them in university. 
I met them in university. When I passed through Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, and everything, I met great people come and talk to us as students. That's what we did. We want to build a better future for you. It's not about us. They will come and tell you, who is Mr. Obi? Mr. Obi doesn't have even structure. They don't know him. What structure do they have? Structure of criminality, corruption, throwing people into poverty, and causing misery for our people. We want to reverse that. That's what we want to do. We will dismantle one of the one of the channels that was interviewing me this morning said establishment. I said which establishment? Is it corruption establishment? Or is it corruption? No. My dear people, we are not here to tell you anything, but to assure you that a new Nigeria is possible. And that new Nigeria will be led by a leader and leaders that understand what the problem is. This election that is coming must not be based on ethnicity. If you are from the north and anybody say what for me because I'm from the north, tell him that the poorest people live in the north. They have been solving for years. Let us show you the north is insecure. That's what you are starting. Because you have voted north since. What did they do? The very people they used to get, they used the controversies. The young people they ride on their back to get there because the first victim. The north is the poorest. South is the same thing. There's poor people everywhere. So please, it is not about ethnicity. You can't drive today from Abuja to Kaduna by air, by road, or by train. It's not because a non-Northerner is in government. Enough of that. This year's election should not be by religion. There's no place Christians or Muslims buy bread cheaper. You do not do a <laughs> If you have any more, if you know any more, where they sell bread cheaper, show me. You go there and buy bread. I come out and wash it. It is enough of that nonsense. Our problem is not religion. I've asked people like this is, you have opportunity of traveling to Dubai. I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic. The Catholic church in Dubai, the land and the church was built by any of Dubai, is a Muslim. Let us stop telling us at concept. The central mosque is done wrong. The land cost billions. The land was donated by the queen, not a Muslim. It's only in Nigeria. Because they want to deceive us. Because they have refused to educate our people. Kept them impoverished. So tell them lies. Tell them we will not follow you by religion. It is not by my tongue. It's nobody's tongue. It's your tongue to take back your country. <laughs>
Let me assure you, this year's election will mess. This year's election will mess and Canada will come across. You no longer stories. The first presidential candidate is here. And I'll tell you who he is. His name is Dati Baba Ahmed. Introduce me and say no introduction. Go and Google his name. You know his age. You know his name. You know the schools he went to. He has PhD in London School of Economics. That is the beginning. We must know those we are voting for. Their name, their age, and everything, and where they will school they went to must not be secret. They must be open. Ah, uh, Mr. Peter, if you look at here, I can show you. Let me tell you, I can show you people whom I went to school with. Yeah. 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 I know we are not in favor. Time is out, but I need to mention something that happened to me. One of the greatest people that helped me in my government is here. Professor Fume. When I became when I became governor, the Nigerian Medical Council, the Nigerian Medical Council refused. The Nigerian Medical Council refused and said to me that the University of Anambra State University Medical School is shut down. And I asked why. They said to me, you have no teaching hospital. And you cannot have a medical school without a teaching hospital. He was the leader of that thing. And I remember, they give them a office. You cannot punish the students because of the mistake of the government. We made the mistake, they will suffer. And I ask you, can you allow me to build a teaching hospital in two years? All the panel members said it will not be possible. <laughs> Professor May said, why don't we give him two years? <laughs> go today. Go to, go to Anambra State University today. I built the fastest teaching hospital ever built. Oh, yeah. So thank you for that. <laughs> the first question, I am saying, this year's election will based on competence. Yes, Character we can trust. Yes. So when I say, I'm Mr. Peter Obi, I went to Christ King College. I was in the University of Nigeria, so come. I'm an alumni of Lagos Business School, an alumnus of Lagos Business School, alumnus of Oxford, alumnus of Cambridge, alumnus of... So, and you can go there and Google it. If you Google Oxford, then you see. So, it is a very simple thing. We need people with commitment. We need people with compassion. So we know what we're doing. Maybe because of us, because I want you to be interaction. I want you to ask questions. I heard when we're talking, they said if anybody do something that is wrong, we'll walk him out. We're not going to walk anybody out of here. You are free to tell me whatever you want. I want to learn from you. So it's about your future. But let me assure you again. Don't allow us to continue the abuse of your country. Don't allow us to continue the abuse of your country. The society you abuse allowing us to abuse today and destroy today will take his revenge on you. God bless you. Thank you.
you please, you may sit down, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation. All right, uh, with your permission, the Vice Chancellor, we are going into the second segment of this particular town hall meeting. Uh, we shall actually engage His Excellency Peter Obi, uh, having some questions from members of the academic and intellectual environment, like two or three. Then we open the room for questions, you know, from the general audience. Boring questions, acceptable questions, please, based on the presentation he has already made. So I would like to invite the yeah. that he did not make. <laughs> All right, I would like to invite Professor Iro Iro Uke, a professor of public administration and policy analysis, to actually raise his question about policy issues that affect our dear country and what will be the plans of His Excellency Peter Obi in this particular area. Uh, starting on the protocol already established, I just have a little practical question that I want to ask our candidate. How are you going to give us electricity? Look, you have to talk about theory. How are you going to give us electricity? How are you going to give us uh, the e learning meal to be productive? And how are you going to give us fuel? Since we are producing crude oil, how are we going to have petrol, kerosene, and all that so that uh, we have the deal? Thank you, sir. Uh, we're going to take two more. I will now invite Dr. Akonde, the head of the Department of Philosophy, uh, for your question, please. Vice Chancellor, sir, please permit me to stand up by this same protocol. My name is Dr. Tude Akande, HOD Philosophy Department, University of Abuja. So please, sorry, Doctor, please introduce yourself proper, then you go ahead with the question. My name is Dr. Tude Akande, and the HOD of Philosophy Department, University of Abuja. Uh, we have it as a popular maxim in philosophy that until philosophers become kings, or kings become philosophers, nations do not know peace. A philosopher king is a leader who has mission, mission backed up with character, competence, and capacity to deliver. As a philosopher, sir, his Excellency Mr. Peter Obi has been the practical demonstration of this popular philosophical action. He has demonstrated it as governor of Anambra State in his business life and in his personal life. The problem of Nigeria is largely a problem of bad thinking. For example, it is as a result of bad thinking that we have crude oil in abundance and we are unable to refine it locally. It is as a result of bad thinking that we have vast expanse of arable land but we cannot have food security. It is as a result of bad thinking that we have so much sunshine 
or cannot champion because of solar technology. We are therefore perishing because of lack of philosophy. Your Excellency, sir, we want to say that we are proud of you as a philosopher. <laughs> and to my fellow Nigerians, I want to use this video to urge you all. Now that we have a chance to install the philosopher king and the philosopher statesman as our leader, in the person of His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi, please do not let this golden opportunity slip by. Let us both mission and vision back up with character, competence and capacity. Your Excellency Sir, we look forward to hosting you as the philosopher president after May 29, 2003, when by his grave you must have been sworn in as the president of the federal government. God bless His Excellency Mr. Peter Obi. God bless Africa Leadership Center. God bless the Department of Philosophy in Africa. God bless the Department of Abuja. God bless the Federal Department of Africa. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. May I also, we have one professor before the student place. Yes, uh, Let me invite professor. Thank you, the uh, uh, president is making. God is making. By all means, God is making. So we are speak this morning. We know that we don't deserve any other person apart from you as the president of this country. But sir, you know the problem of Nigeria is complex. And as you have just enumerated here, we have a lot of issues. It's like in abundance of water, the good is best. Sir. How do you assure us that when you get into this system, that you build this system in such a way that even when you leave, the system will still be captured? We know that we are assured that we are going to break the system. But the issue is not just to break the system. The issue is after you have gone, by the grace of God, you will be there. But after you, what happened next? So that you will be like another, another country of the world. We are not the person entering balance, but how the system plays the role. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, thank you. Uh, His Excellency will respond to the questions. Then, before we turn to the general audience, we invite you to make your questions. Now what we will make sure you hear it very well. Even if you don't hear the question, I'll repeat it before I answer it. Papa Suke, let me thank you because you came from the policy stand. Papa Suke, there's nothing difficult in power generation. There's nothing that Nigeria is going through that other nations have not gone through. The three countries that have been able to double their capacity in power generation, the fastest growth in power generation in the past five years has been three countries, and those three countries are developing countries. Number one is India, Vietnam, and Egypt. Egypt is in Africa. Listen, Egypt is in Africa. Egypt found out that power was critical to the economic development. And what did they do? They put in what made it necessary for them within a period of four years to move to below 20,000 megawatts to nearly 50,000 megawatts. As we speak, Egypt is exporting power to Europe. Egypt is in Africa. I was in Egypt for three days studying what they did. What they did, bro, we can do it now. Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. That's what we claim. Tens of Africa. 
In terms of Africa, they raise between four to 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Distribution, that is the giant, with over 200 million people. The second biggest economy is South Africa. South Africa is about 60 million people, but they generate nearly 50,000 megawatts. You are 200,000, 200 million. You generate five to maybe about 5,000. And then somebody with 50, generates about 50, 50. And in the past two months, South Africa has declared a war, what they call emergency power. Can Google it and say they're not generating enough. That anybody can generate 100 megawatts without license. Somebody who is generating 50, about 50,000, 60 million people have declared emergency. Then you're generating 5,000, you're 200 million. What will you do? We declare war. <laughs> if you read my manifesto, if you read my our manifesto, you will see clear lines of what we want to do with the issue of power. We've said by end of this year alone, we will ensure that we we'll complete the power project with Siemens to ensure 7,000 generation transmission and distribution. And we promise that we are going to do 2024 and what we are going to do 2025 is documented there. One thing I can tell you that if there is anything that they are not discussed every day that we can't afford to fail this thing. We can now reach, we share it year by year, not wasting anybody's time. On the rolling bill, I can tell you, Prof. When we want to deal with the issue of internalization, we've not given a detailed question what we are going to do because we need an expert advice. First, that we want government to pull out of any form of investment. Government is not a good money. We want it to be everything to be privatized, but not the lot of things that done in the past. Where we privatize profit and socialize losses, we will not deal with it the way it's going to be done. And everybody will see in a transparent, regretful manner. On the issue of fuel, first is that people have asked this question. If we have the opportunity from day one, we will remove something. Gone. The people will tell you, oh, there will be crisis. Let me assure you, there will not be any crisis. First is that subsidy, as it is in Nigeria today, is organized crime. Nigeria is a country with about 200 and 250 million population. Pakistan is about population, 200, 250 million. Pakistan have more roads than Nigeria, yet their daily consumption of fuel is below 50% of Nigeria. We will remove something. Besides no country in the world refuses to invest money where it's supposed to invest money. The greatest investment any nation can do is education. The more you invest in education, the more developed you are. Everybody knows that. You can't talk about physical infrastructure without dealing with human infrastructure. But look at it now. Your country, the national country, between 2015 and 2021, six years, the total budget in education is about 3.6 trillion. Can go and check it about three, three trillion five hundred. It's about three point six trillion. The second most important thing a nation can do is help. In fact, if you follow Professor Andrew Sutton, the Nobel Peace Prize winner in 2015, he said that the difference between rich and poor countries is 
help on education. The second biggest thing you can do is help. Your budget to help is about 2.6 trillion for six years. These two combined is about six trillion. And your spending in budget budget for subsidy in one year is six point seven trillion. It's not acceptable. That is why your country is collapsing. We will remove it. We will support those who are going to do those who are going to do public finance facilities here. That budget is about to become complete. We have some other money, the final is we are not even getting the crude oil. I say it every day, people don't want that. They even have people that say they are doing it illegally. I will go to them and say, Oga, no more illegal. Come, let's do it illegal. Because I want you to produce what you <laughs> Anybody, anywhere I can make it possible to be available, I'll do it. And I'll bring the price down. And I'll use the resources they used to steal to invest in education, to invest in health. If we have educated Nigeria and healthy Nigeria, we will develop. So that is what we have in full. On the issue of bad thinking, proper thank, I thank you. Nigeria is not just bad thinking. It's bad thinking plus stealing. It's the, they don't know, they know what they're doing. We need the dollar. I'm just giving you an example. A country that needs every one dollar is not producing its quota. If you compare Nigeria and Angola, this year, because of the high oil price last year, Angola inflation have come down. The rate of exchange have gone down. Nigeria took the other way around because you're not producing your quota. I just give an example with example with July. In August, our production was one. On the last chapter, it's coming up now. In August, our production was 975. We are losing 825 every day. For that one day, about 25 million barrels, which are 100, 192.5 million dollars. The money is in every day. So we'll deal with that. It's bad thinking and silly. We'll stop the You ask about if I do whether I can be sustained. Probably can be sustained. When you talk about the institution, what sustains the institution anywhere in the world is the people. What sustains the institution anywhere in the world is the people. If you go to Ghana today, Ghana, I'm not saying anyone, and you're doing you are doing driving against the road where they say it's one way, it is only for vehicle going this way. And you're going against it, Kenyans will block you. They'll block you. A minister was just a who's in Africa recently because what did he do? None you, a, a minister was removed in Africa recently for corruption. What did he do? Because they found out that the minister suddenly built a new house in East Africa. In Nigeria, they forced me to be in. He has no house in Africa. Everybody knows he doesn't have a house in Africa. Six months, he built the biggest house in Africa. Goes to his local church and says, Do Thanksgiving. Invite everybody. You come there, the bishop is saying that he's praying to God that he continue blessing him so he can build more. The people are there drinking and singing when they know what to do. Call police. If I are them in their money. So we celebrate criminality. We celebrate criminality, bad behavior. The only way I could have come in here and it makes me that I would have come with police and all over the place, pushing people up and down. That is madness. And nobody says anything. 
Nobody have ever asked anybody in Nigeria, what does it do for a living? We are people without daytime job, living like stars, and are being celebrated. Even coming to university and donating money, at university are giving the honor of the degree. That is the crisis we have. That must change. Universities must give the degree to renowned professors of research who have developed something, not to this. We have a country where professors are paid 400,000 now. We are, are counselors and more than a professor. Which country is that? Where we negotiate with bandits, but we can't negotiate with professors. What country is that? Yeah. If you destroy it, who will deal with we must change this country? So prof, we can sustain it. We will sustain we the people will sustain it. We will say no. When the new person comes and says, hey, say, okay, okay, okay. Don't stop this one. Let me tell you, as governor, just to conclude, I used to go to church. And I said to them, if the governor comes late, you stay at the back. That's where they come and stay. Okay. Because I was giving it as the governor, when I left, one local government chairman came one day, I wanted to go first. They told him, fit of you should stay at the back. <laughs> it is the people. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now we shall take questions from the students. Uh, I'm going to select one here, one, 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 one. One. No. Okay. Okay, please. Uh, okay, that's okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, my name is Polu Bayet Tiovilos I am from the Department of History and Diplomatic Studies. Yes, sir. Sir, I want to ask. You have talked so much on the economic uh, problem of this country. How do we channel the, uh, the intellectual of young people in this country to actualize a prosperity in our, a prosperity in our economy? Uh, talking about, for instance, like the polytechnic uh, education, how can we revive it? How is it possible that people can go to school to study furniture and they will make it? How can we go to school that people will study uh, iron bending or what they call it and people can make it? You don't know have to always come to be a lawyer or you be a... People can actually... Come to for them. That is why they believe that school is bought 
My second question goes to what is his plan for the youth? Are we just going to be obedient and not see any significant change in our welfare and job security? Because a lot of us are out of, are out of school and there's no job for us. I also want to ask, I also want to ask his excellency in his thought in improving our GDP. Thank you, man. And by the grace of God, all right. Parent of this great nation, come here to pray. There is I'm agitated. After listening to one of the presidential candidates at a rally where he made an allegation that the current US casting we are having in Nigeria. Change of colors or the colors, we are all directed at sabotaging the forthcoming election. My question is Do you align yourself with this lamentations expressed by this candidate? If, you, if no, tell us. How you see this policy of change currency at this hour? Thank you. All right, thank you. Please, last station. Thank you, please. We have to be done. Then, 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 then. Good morning, my excellency. It's a great honor to be in front of this room. And you are welcome. My name is Anne Pester. I'm a London level student of post science and international relations. My question is on insecurity. Three officers, um, military officer, official, we are in the attack in the United States, which I know you heard about. Every one of us heard about it. On the convo, guys, former governor, former governor, we came or had him. What is your plan or what are your plans? in tackling insecurity issues. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, may I invite the Vice Chancellor? Let me invite the Vice Chancellor, please, to make a presentation to His Excellency before he continues to respond to your questions. The University of Abuja has a tradition. And the tradition is to show gratitude for our guests and assure them that we welcome them to our great campus. And we are grateful for taking their time. Can we don't have money, but we can give a token. And therefore, our meaning is talking to beat out.
And for our previous Nigerian students, uh, secondly, I want to give him a copy of my book. It's a collection of poetry poems, and it's titled Obama Mentor. Thank you, thank you, my sister. We really appreciate the gift in this Thank you, thank you, thank you. about 2.2 trillion. 
So it is a different thing. You can, you are a job creator. The highest number, the best school you can go in India today. The school that created millions of, created the most number of billionaires in, or the most number of people who have celebrated billionaires in India is Bombay Institute of Technology. That school was built the same year by British government as the Abbott College of Technology. It is just that Nigeria failed. And we are not getting it right. When we had COVID, we were looking for work. Where? Where to produce work? Eh? Nigeria had a machine factory in Yaba. But when we are using seeds to find also for other problems, but we killed it. So education, technical school, actually better than the academic school. Tailoring, furniture making, crafting. Who are the biggest furniture making makers in the world? They have more money than professors. So we want you to focus on skill. I can give you opportunity. I can go on and on. But we have so many questions. What do you do in terms of asset strike? That means you're not been following my campaign. Let me assure you today. And in assuring you this, nobody will be in position of telling you what I'm telling you today. The vast potential candidate of labor owes to universities. As you know, Dati Baba Ahmed owes to universities. I know what I tell him every day. The only way university can, public university can be closed is that your own is closed. Four years. People who say it's impossible, let me tell you, as governor of Anambra State, I had a strike. As governor of Anambra State, I had a strike. I sat down with the, with the university management, discuss what we are going to do in order to end that strike. In your last eight month strike, and I'm not the university was one of them. Go and check. And they will tell you, go and listen to them what the SUG president said. He said they were not on strike because of Peter Bill's decision in 2009. Schools cannot be closed. If they are closed, Nigeria is closed. Because that's where we are training the future. And that brings me when somebody asked that I said, that how are we going to manage the schools? Tertiary education. The way we are managing the Nigeria is not the way it should be done. We have what you call debt fund. It's money for corporations. We will ensure that it's better managed. We will ensure that we increase more funding and we will do so many methods, including Loans to sustain universities. University education must change. I'm sure when I say loans to sustain university education, some of you will say, oh no, we don't want to loan. Let me tell you the beauty of loan. If you want to go to school, you only pay it when you have a job. If you don't have a job, you don't pay it. So with that, we will change the funding in Nigeria. Yeah. What has happened is that there is no physical support to micro, small businesses where your domicile. If we support you, you are energetic, you are creative, you will be creating jobs. And then those, because they are going to move the country from consumption to production, there will be opportunities for job creation in different fields. And that's what we are going to do.
in the African DNA. Let me assure you, we already, it was, it's already been done in America, where some people say they're from Nigeria, and Nigerian government is already giving them opportunities to the citizen. Somebody asked about brain drain. Let me tell you, I'm not worried about brain drain. Brain drain will be brain gauge. Those that change India today, those that change China today, those that change all those countries, are people who left at time of difficulty. When things are good, they will all come back with what they have learned from them. I'm not worried about those who are living in Nigeria. Quote me, when we do what we do here, they will come back. And people will escape. They will bring the foreign investors. So don't worry about them. If doctors leave, I will train more doctors. We will give them a job here. If we do the right thing, people want to come back here. If we do the right thing, people want to come back here. I've lived abroad myself. And I know that people want to come back here. But you cannot come back. Nobody knows if he goes where there's anarchy. Even animals. If ants are passing here and you put fire there, they'll turn away. So nobody goes where there's a problem. Nobody will come back here. So those who want to leave, I don't blame you. If you have way to leave, but you make it such a way that you come back. Prof, you asked about you asked about fuel shortage and foreign cities. One is that the Central Bank of Nigeria have rights to change the currency. It's within their law. They are obeying the law. Number two, those who say they are doing this for for election, they are in better position to know. I don't make comments about other candidates. Especially the candidates were established, they know because they're inside. Me, I'm outside. I don't know whether the hunger, the imposing of suits, is also an imposing election. I don't know whether the poverty they're creating is also because of election. They know better. I don't know. But I want to tell you that under my watch, we will not have first cast. Under my watch, we we'll have this war. But what they do, they are in position to know better because they are part of that. I've said it before, we need to just have people who can explain to us and everything and communicate. We can no longer have an issue where people say, oh, because they change currency, let people vote whoever they want to vote. Let them do whatever, whatever they want to do. I'm not in position to know. You might be part of them, so you tell me, but I'm not. And I think. Somebody tells about what I have for the youth. Let me assure you, the youth are the future. The government we want to run. Every day they tell you the leaders of tomorrow. They were telling me this when I was in university. That we are leaders of tomorrow. Till today, they don't, till today they don't want to go. And we, have, we want to force them to go. One of the things that they do, Go and look at the four major candidates and the youngest. In fact, to tell you what it is, if you look at the two major parties, call the three major candidates. Among the three major candidates, I'm the youngest. Each of them, each of them are my senior with at least 15 years. Yes, 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 right? If you do an average age, because we are going to use an average age. If you do an average age, an average age between the chairman of the party of say PDP, the chairman of the party, the candidate and the vice presidential candidate, the average is 70. 
that is the average. The average is 70. If you do, if you do, if you do the one of APC, <laughs> the one of APC, the chairman, the chairman is 75, that I know. The candidate is unknown. As I was coming here this morning, I saw two policemen dragging down a young man from a taxi because he was wearing, to them, they say he's a Yahoo Yahoo boy. I said, show me evidence. They couldn't. And I said, if you don't leave him now that I'm here, you and your crew will run away from here this moment. Because that was in front of the school. So, uh, Your Excellency, the Nigerian police, most of them, not all of them, their activities, especially those on the road, 
especially those on the highway, especially those who, who harass people. Your Excellency, we need help. I don't know what we are going to do to Nigerian police. Sometimes I wonder, are we going to remove all of them and chase them away? Or are we going to retrain them? Nigerian, Nigerian police needs to be declared as a state of emergency. Because the kind of police that we have now and their actions and inactions, Your Excellency, if nothing is done and you become the president of this country by God's grace, they can be a source of failure. So, Mr. President, Mr. Excellency, I don't know the assurance you are going to give us on what will happen to the Nigerian police. Thank you very much. Please give the last patient, please. My name is Hotel Campbell. Now, in 2020, the federal government banned cryptocurrency trading. And 80% of digital revenue has gone people to online. So, what we do to extend this revenue to ensure that the cryptocurrency and the digital space have the federal government back in your tenure. Thank you. Um, my question is about people that have their PBC in other states and are currently in school and they are going to find it difficult to vote. I have a few late friends that are registered in where the state where they live, but they are currently in school and it's going to be difficult for them to travel to go and vote. And some schools are uh, fixing exams close to the election day. So is there any way we can mobilize, maybe, uh, is there any way we can mobilize students to go to their various states to vote for the upcoming election? But I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure, I'm sure about four million students. We're, we're, we're up to the we are we are supposed to start by ten. But because of the way you are, most of the questions are the same thing. So we just have to stop. You know, I've to them. What is different in this? Your Excellency, my question is different. And I believe something very good. We are praying that people do it. The PTOB will not be in Enugu State, PTOB will not be in Adamawa, PTOB will not be in Lagos, PTOB will not be in Baochi. Now, there is something called state capture. You struggle to get the power from nowhere, you will come and hijack it. What pre precisely we are talking here is about what South Africans have called state capture. What is your strategy to ensure that by the time these masses, these Nigerian masses, so far, see you as the home, justice, fairness, and all that. Now, this mandate entered the hand of Peter. What is the chance that from nowhere people will enter the property and Peter will begin to find some challenges in managing these human beings? Okay. And I'll start from you. Let me start from you. Let me tell you, I've been a governor. As a governor of my state, I do not have one member in House of Assembly of my party. I do not have a local government chairman. I do not have a house of rep member or state member. My body was as small as this. You only worry about all this when you're going to run a transactional government. If you're going to be transparent, you know the mother when I 
And if you know me, I don't think they'll come from anywhere. What we are going to do, have no room for anybody coming from any country. We will capture the person before I capture them. I have two questions here which I will answer. Probably ask about corruption and theft. But when I finish this out, I use them to conclude. Here, people ask about the issue of Nigerian police. Let me assure you. Let me assure you. Nigerian police is not the problem. We will check Nigerian police to the police and they will be friendly. It's because they don't know those boys who are going to be a little boy because of lack of our investment in our job. We will make those people who are going to be a little boy. We will check them because they have the talent to check the war. Because they didn't know what he was doing. 
But a, a woman who was there doing cleaning had him as a mother, as a child, looking after him. That woman was eventually given a tiny, the cleaner, giving a tiny percent of Microsoft, which eventually turned into a pillar. So, in such a fascinating, all these young, young boys, all they need is their direction, and they will change the world. I'm not saying there might be some of them who are criminals, but I think when India was doing that, and we thought India was doing it, today India is the ICT owner in Nigeria, we will change it. Those who carry laptops will give them more laptops.
2010. Nigeria in 2010. The total debt of Nigeria is about $10 billion in 2010. A little bit more to me. It's about that. How we start on what we Our GDP then, our GDP then as a country. In fact, if we put the local domestic debt up and the standard debt, it will be more. It will be about two or three times that. Our per capita, which is the real measure of wealth in 2010, is about 2000 $500. Another country, Bangladesh, as at that time, was owing about $40 billion. And their per capita was $747. In 2010. In 2021, Nigerian debt by the end of last year, 2022, let me come to 2000, Nigerian debt has not increased where I've told you, if you add where that means, we are debt is now 77 trillion, which is Hundred and eighty seven billion dollars. So I bet that grown by about maybe six hundred times because cumulatively domestic and foreign, we are about thirty times. Because I use only this, we are about thirty, now we are one eighty something. But our per capita is now two thousand. So we borrowed more money. And our per capita went down. Bangladesh have moved from debt of 47 billion, 40 billion dollars to debt of 115 billion. Their per capita is now 2,500 and something. So their per capita have tripled. Their GDP have tripled. Nigeria all shrink. That is the money you borrow like you could say slave chopped it. So we're going to look for that slave. Not the boss. Yes. We're going to look for the slave. And be able to know where I can commit some. We're not going to take everything. So that's what we're going to do. I'll show you then finally of corruption. That thing was the only house, special assembly member. And the only senator who did not buy his house when Father Government sold house to senators. <laughs> that thing did not buy his house. I have challenged everybody since I started this journey. Go and show me where I bet, where Adam Rastet money is missing. The day I handed over has gone on. It's important. And listen. The day I handed over has gone on. I was not owing pension. I was not owing gratuity. Whatever we want pension and gratuity before I came, that something brilliant I cleared it off. I was not owing salary. I was not worried for any contractor. Go and look for any contractor. I was not worried for any contractor who have worked or delivered what we asked him to do. Whether it's supply or construction, I wasn't worried one person. And no contractor will ever say he sat down with Peter Odi to discuss what Peter Odi will give him. We were not doing that. And above all, I left in three banks in Nigeria for the Arab State government 
Access Bank of Nigeria, I had it as a balance Madam President government, $50 million over 10 million dollars. I had for in that one bank, $50 million over 10 million dollars. Infidelity Bank, $50 million over 10 million dollars. I left when I left office, 70 something billion dollars. I did not borrow one dollar from anybody. I did not go to anywhere to ask the borrow. And I don't know. Till today, you can go and and find. Now, till today, no state, no state that any governor left that do not have governor's benefit. Every governor who have left office today is being paid one fee or the other. When they brought it to me, my speaker had a very generous gift, a very generous question for me, and he brought it for me to sign. And I said, Mr. Speaker, I have served the people of Anambra State. I is great. I'm going home. Anambra has never bought me a bottle of water since I left. Thank you. So, I will fight corruption. I have shown you that we will fight corruption. We will stop it. If you are not stealing, the, mo the worst corruption is the politician. If you are not doing that, putting people who are not qualified in office, if you are not putting the right thing, you are not doing the wrong thing. If you, which I know me and that you are not, are not involved, your wife and children are not involved, those around you are not involved, you live by 50%. And I assure you, we will deal with corruption. Just believe us, support us, vote for us, and in Nigeria as possible. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Excellency, thank you, Excellency. Uh, may I recognize the presence of the Deputy Vice-Chancellor Administration, 